Hey guys, this is Mike with his Onan 2800 Fix-It-Yourself DIY video series of which there is only 11 seconds so far. So I wanted to show you guys what this thing looks like with the cover off because before I pulled it out of my road trek, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know how complicated it was going to be. I didn't know how complicated the connecting systems were. Um, and so I just want to show you what I've learned um, since I pulled this off. So the first thing to know is uh, there's an, an air filter that's missing here. There's an air filter retainer that's missing here. Aside from that, everything is pretty much what it looks like when you take the case off, except that there's also some insulation that goes over this side and some insulation that goes over this side, over the muffler, actually. So the first thing to note is what you normally see whenever you look at these with, through the control panel is this board is not visible because you've got your stop start switch right here. This is just connected with these two holes with a bolt in these two holes below. These two holes below. Right? You just disconnect, you just take off those bolts and you get the control board behind the scenes. Now this is not so intimidating. This is, I was a little worried about taking this off, but all you have back here is a PCB with some circuitry. You've got two wiring harness connectors and you've got 125, 120 volts out, 110 to 120 volts out. The wiring connectors just disconnect. You can just pull these apart. There's one. There's two. The 120 volts here that you see is actually connected via a breaker. That's the 25 amp breaker that's on the outside that you can access without taking the case off. And the wiring harnesses go to various places in the generator. One of them is your inputs. Um, those inputs include your remote start, which is in your coach where you can hit the start button for your generator. That's one set of wires coming in. The set of wires going out is your 120 volts out, 110, 120 volts out. Also, there's internal wiring between this board on the left-hand side of the generator and the wires over here on the right-hand side of the generator. These wires are connected pretty much up to the voltage regulator, which is this white box here at the bottom. We're also looking at the ignition coil, which builds up a voltage sufficient for ignition. And this wire carries that voltage to your spark plug, which then um, initiates a spark in the engine, which is like back here. Uh, something else of note behind the voltage, voltage um, regulator is this connection here at the top with the red in the back and the white that my finger is on. That's your connection to your low oil level sensor marked S2 in wiring diagrams. Now they say on some of these models you can just disconnect this and then a faulty sensor won't stop your generator from running. Now my generator stops running as soon as I let go of the start button. So I thought maybe that's what was going on. So I disconnected this, didn't change anything. So I reconnected it. I'm not even sure if my model is the one where disconnecting is supposed to help. Now let's, let's take a look at how the inputs happen on this thing because that was the main thing I was worried about. How many connections are there to the outside world that I need to worry about when removing it from my road trek? Well, all of your connections to the outside world happen back here in the back left-hand corner. So we've got a couple things coming in. Here on the bottom, this is the remote start adapter. So that just has a mating adapter that comes out of your coach and connects up to the front panel. This is, this is basically that control panel um, having a remote, um, remote wiring to it, right? So that just connects up to a mating piece. And you don't actually need to have that connected, but then you have to start your generator from underneath. This large wire is your hot in. That's your DC 12 volts in. It comes directly from your battery that's usually placed pretty cloak, close. It's connected via a nut to another ring connector like that. And there's usually a sheath over it that you have to bend back. I have it bent back here. It covers the whole thing. So you have to put that back together later. So that's your hot in. And the last thing that's coming in in the back left hand corner is your fuel line. So normally this would be connected up to the fuel tank of your RV. The fuel line comes in and it hits this. It's connected to the fuel pump intake as you can see there. 
Now the fuel pump is down here at the bottom corner. It's a low pressure fuel pump. And it, does, it sets up low pressure fuel, comes out on this side, and then there's a black cable. You can see it's starting there. See it's starting there. It travels forth in this intake baffle at the bottom. See it there. Goes underneath the baffle, goes underneath the control board. You can still see it, still see it. And then it ends up connecting up to your fuel filter, which is this silver spaceship looking thing here in the center. Clean fuels in this, in this hose, hits your carb. Your carb mixes air and fuel in the right ratios. Sends it into the intake manifold, and then it's intake intaked into the engine where you get combustion and power, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Your engine's in the front, it's a super engine actually, but it turns um, it turns the output, uh, whatever that's called, the output, <laughs> motor output, and the motor output then spins the generator, which is actually responsible for producing a voltage. So that's what this thing looks like. Also in front we have your oil dipstick. When you're checking your oil, take it out, wipe it off, set it in there, don't screw it down, pick it up again, take a look. That's how to check your oil. Your spark plug is here. If you need to access that, there's a, there's a hole in the case. But the hole in the case usually has a cover on it. It took me a second to figure this out. What you do is you reach in with your hand and you bend back some plastic teeth that are holding that cover in against the wall and it pops out, pops out from this, from this side. And then you can access it with a 13 16 um, socket. So you can just pull this off. This is the seat, I think it's called. Pull that off. Go ahead and do that. And then you can use your socket wrench to get in there and pull the spark plug out. Check for spark. The muffler over on this side, those two bolts hold it on. You can take that entire apparatus off because moving it with the muffler is a bit of a hassle. But you should know that if you do that, you need to disconnect this line that controls the choke. This line here, which is just a wire that's bent at the end. You can kind of see it there. That line has to come out on, at this end, and then you can remove the muffler. But you remember, have to, you have to connect that again. It won't run without the choke being properly connected. You also, when you're removing the carb, need to remove this throttle line. Same deal, except there's two wires on this one. They both need to come out, and they both need to be reconnected the way that they're disconnected. Last thing I want to say is if you want to remove this carb and replace it, which is the main reason things go bad, people leave things for too long. The fuel that has a um, certain subset of the fuel will start to gum up and carbs are very sensitive. So you can either clean the carb if you can get at it or you can replace it with a new carb. They're not super expensive. But the easiest way to get this carb out is to remove these two bolts here and here. This one's kind of hard to get to. If you have smaller hands, it's easier. But you remove those two bolts, pull them all the way out, and you can take this entire thing out. Obviously, you disconnect this hose first. Take the entire thing out, bolt the new carb on to the intake manifold. You can put the entire thing back, screw it back in. One thing to remember or to notice, there's a seal here that, that needs to be there. This seal needs to be here because this the, the entire apparatus requires a vacuum. So if you lose that seal, which I did, leaving a small gap, there's just way too much air going into the thing. You can't create a compression situation. And uh, so that's important. Don't lose that seal. Mine just dropped down below. I was able to pick it up. But if it was still in my van, I would not have been able to get at it. Couldn't see what was going on. So yeah, there's the air uh, filter, which is I've removed. And there's a retainer, just a piece of wire that holds it in there. Uh, that's the only thing I've taken off of this whole thing. So yeah, that's what I've been doing. Right now I'm setting up my 110 volts out. I've added these lever nuts so that I can like open it up and leave a multimeter connected. And that was to observe whether or not voltage was coming out of this thing. So you can start it up using the starter motor and then just compare your black and white wires and you can look for a voltage developing and you'll know that it's producing some voltage. So that's a useful thing to know. Oh, also, last thing to know is that whenever you're connecting this thing up, to, to get this thing to run, when it's not connected to your RV, you've got to connect up your black and red leads in a specific way. So to your battery, if you've got alligator clips, red alligator goes to this, right? Just set it to the side somewhere. 
black alligator has to go somewhere on the on the case itself on the on the engine I use this right here it's beefy it's thick there's not a lot of electricity flowing through it flowing through it so connect up to something like this it has to be something metal on this case because it all shares a common ground so if you try to do something like connect to the case outside here which I tried the paint is insulative so you can't you can't electricity will not flow through this paint you can sort of get it through inside these screw holes but really you need a beefy connection so I would just say connect to the bottom the top of the engine here I'm sorry here and uh, and you're good to go other places you can also do but they can start to interfere with like your throttle and your choke and things so that's a good spot you can start one of these up with your jump start uh, lithium jump start system or regular 12 volt battery with I believe 400 cold cranking amps so yeah I hope that helps hope be a little less intimidated by these things um, they're easier to work on than I expected I know they look complex but they are less complex than you might think and once you know how to work on one of them pretty much all of the small engines work the same so it's a useful thing to learn I encourage you to get a friend have them oversee what you're doing and figure it out all right good luck